friends! Welcome to a new happy learning video. Today we are going to learn about the invertebrate animals. You all know that the animals are divided into two big groups. The vertebrates that have an internal skeleton formed by bones and the invertebrates that have no bones. Vertebrates are oviparous and we classify them in six big groups sponges, jellyfish, corals, worms, mollusks, echinoderms, and arthropods. The sponges are aquatic animals that are sac shaped and the body is full of pores. It is very easy to remember this group because many times we use them in the shower for our personal hygiene. Yes, many of the sponges we use in the shower are invertebrate animals. The jellyfish are invertebrate animals that live in the ocean. Their bodies are gelatinous and have tentacles. The truth is that when they appear in the beach it is very annoying because their tentacles have small venomous stingers that produce very unpleasant bites. Corals are tiny marine animals that produce limestone residue, which give rise to beautiful shapes. this animal? Exactly, it's a worm. Worms are soft and long invertebrate animals that move by dragging the body in the ground because they have no feet. They can be aquatic or terrestrial. There are some worms that can be harmful and that is why we must be careful with them. Can you see this snail? Well, snails form part of the mollusk group. Mollusks have a soft body with their legs and can also be aquatic or terrestrial. Some, like this snail, this clam, and mussels, protect the body with shells. But there are other mollusks that don't have a shell to protect themselves like slugs or octopuses. The echinoderms are exclusively aquatic animals. Their bodies have calcareous plates that form a shell. Some echinoderms are balloon shaped and are covered in spikes that they use to defend themselves, like sea urchins. Others are star shaped and are of course called starfish. Arthropods are the most abundant animals on the earth. Of every 100 animals that exist, 80 are arthropods. These invertebrate animals have the body covered by an external skeleton called a cuticle. The most common way to classify the arthropods is by the number of legs they have. This way we can classify them in four big groups. Arthropods with six legs, in this group, insects like ants and flies are present. Arthropods with eight legs, where for example, the arachnids like spiders and scorpions are. Arthropods with 10 legs include the crustaceans, like crabs and lobster. Arthropods with more than 10 legs, like the centipede that, as you can see, has much more than 100 legs and are called myriapods. Well, now you know a bit more about the invertebrates. 
the animal kingdom is divided into two main groups, vertebrates and invertebrates. Vertebrate animals, like this elephant, this parrot, or this little frog, have a skeleton. They have bones. Look, look! This is the skeleton of an elephant. This is the skeleton of a frog. And this is the skeleton of a fish. Invertebrate animals, however, have no bones. They don't have an internal skeleton. Like this ant. Or this slow snail. Within the group of vertebrate animals are mammals. Like these funny dogs. Birds. Like our friend the parrot. Reptiles. Like this gecko. Which is a kind of lizard. Fish like this fearsome shark and amphibians like this little jumping frog Remember, there are five types of animals that have bones There are five types of vertebrates Mammals Birds Reptiles Fish and amphibians. Within the group of invertebrates, in other words, those animals that don't have bone, there are arthropods, like this shy crab, mollusks, like this octopus and its eight tentacles, annelids, like this worm, Echinoderms, like this spiky sea urchin, sponges, and nadarians, like this shiny jellyfish. They really do have some strange names. Arthropods, mollusks, annelids, Echinoderms, sponges, and nadarian really are very curious, aren't they? Now, let's see if we can distinguish which animals are vertebrates and which are invertebrate. Is this dancing bear a vertebrate or invertebrate? Of course! Bears are vertebrate animals. They have bones and they are also mammals. What about this slug? Slugs are invertebrate animals. They are mollusks. They have no bones and are very soft. And this eagle? Eagles do have bones. They are birds. They're animals, vertebrate animals. And finally, these bees. Hmm, are they vertebrates or invertebrates? Bees do not have an internal skeleton and they do not have bones. They are arthropods. In other words, they are invertebrate animals. And what's more, they make very delicious and healthy honey. Well, we've already learnt more about the animal kingdom and about vertebrate and invertebrate animals. Let's take a look over it so we don't forget. Let's review. The animal kingdom is divided into two main groups, vertebrates and invertebrates. 
vertebrate animals have bones, an internal skeleton, and are classified into five groups. Mammals, birds, reptiles, fish, and amphibians. Invertebrate animals have no internal skeleton, no bones, and are classified into six groups. Arthropods, mollusks, annelids, echinoderms, sponges, and nadarians. Did you know that for every four animals, three of them are insects? We calculate that for every human being, there are 200 million insects. We are surrounded by insects, so I think it's important to get to know them a little more. Insects are invertebrate animals that share a number of characteristics. Their body is divided into head, thorax and abdomen. They have two antennae, six legs and breathe through their trachea. From the moment they are born, insects undergo a series of body changes called metamorphosis. Most insects are oviparous and maggots are born from the eggs. As we can see in the images, they don't look anything alike their parents. They look like worms. When they grow, they enclose themselves in a cocoon they make with a substance called silk. Inside the cocoon, they undergo an incredible change in their bodies and they exit as adult insects. This metamorphosis stage is called pupa. Although, when referring to butterflies, we call it chrysalis. The large majority of insects have wings. In fact, they are the only group of invertebrates that can fly. Another shared characteristic amongst insects is that they have almost perfect vision. They have compound eyes. It's as if they had hundreds of tiny eyes in each eye, which provides excellent peripheral vision. As we said before, there are so many insects and there are also many types. There are very annoying insects like head lice, flies, or mosquitoes. Interesting insects because of their shape, like stick insects or leaf insects. Beautiful ones like butterflies or dragonflies or singer insects like a grasshopper or cricket that besides from singing is an excellent jumper. But do you know my favourite insect? It's a bee because I love the honey they make. Some insects, like ants or bees, live in highly organised societies where they each have a job assigned. The queen ant, for example, is in charge of laying eggs. Drone ants protect the nest. And worker ants are in charge of getting food and taking care of maggots. The truth is, insects are incredible and although by their size they might seem unimportant, they are fundamental for nature's balance. For example, they are in charge, along with some birdies, of pollination. Some insects, like my beloved bees, 
are constantly flying from flower to flower, transporting pollen from one flower to the next, fertilizing them, which makes new amazing plants come to life. The truth is, most insects, like most living things, are marvelous, don't you think? The arthropods are invertebrates, meaning they don't have internal skeletons. They are a vast amount of them, including this dancing crab, these dragonflies, this caterpillar, or even all these tiny ants. The arthropods are very different from each other. Or do you think this butterfly and this shrimp have a similarity? Truth is, they don't look alike at all. But yet all arthropods have common characteristics. Arthropod is a Latin word, which means atro, joints, and podos, feet or legs. The main arthropod characteristic refers to what their name suggests. They all have jointed legs. Another fascinating characteristic that they all have in common is that their body is divided into segments many of which, though not all, are protected by an external skeleton, which is used as a shield or a shell. Some arthropods' bodies do not grow at the same rate as their exoskeleton, therefore making them shed it for a bigger size, a process known as malting. Arthropods can be either terrestrial or aquatic. The terrestrials, such as this scorpion, breathes through their trachea whereas the aquatic arthropods breathe through their gills. Arthropods eat everything. Some are herbivores, such as this caterpillar. Others, carnivores, like this praying mantis. And others, omnivores, like the wasps, which eat everything. Most arthropods have internal fertilization and are oviparous, meaning they lay eggs to reproduce. Larvas hatch from these eggs and then go through different stages before becoming an adult. The changes is called metamorphosis. As there are so many different types of arthropods, they are classified into four large groups depending on the amount of legs they have. Insects have six legs, such as an ant, flies or those really annoying nets. The arachnids have eight legs, such as spiders or scorpions. Crustaceans have ten legs, like this shrimp or this shy crab. And their myriapods have more than ten legs, and their bodies are elongated, like these caterpillars or these centipedes. Now we're going to remember the most important things. Arthropods are invertebrates and their main characteristics are their jointed legs. Their bodies are divided into segments and they lay eggs to reproduce, meaning they are oviparous. The terrestrial arthropods breathe through their tracheas and the aquatic arthropods through their gills and they can be either herbivores, carnivores or omnivores. Lastly, and very importantly, you must remember that the arthropods are classified in four groups depending on the amount of legs they have. Insects, six legs. Arachnids, eight legs. Crustaceans, ten legs. And myriapods are those who have more than ten legs and have elongated bodies. Well, that's everything for today. And now you know a little bit more about arthropods. Until the next video, my friends. <laughs>